This film features seven old lodging places around the Branson, Missouri area in various states of quote, abandonment and reconditioning, and is cobbled together from various clips recorded on multiple dates, some going back five years now. This first one that I don't know the history of, or even what it may have been called in this case, appears to be attached to a still open gas station and convenience store right smack at one of the area's more congested intersections. I originally thought the blue and white building in the back was part of the motel, but now realize it was once its own hotel at some point. Probably. It's not really fair to call these abandoned, None of the places in this film probably are technically, but they are old, worn out, and not in service obviously, which of course is a threat to their existence, which in turn compels me to document them before they inevitably transform. This blank vintage sign, for example, isn't going to be installed here forever, so it's best to record a good look at it while we can. Somebody did a pretty good job prettying up this place for long-term storage, though it looks like even that may have happened a number of years ago. You can see this location really is in the heart of Tourist Central, with the Ferris wheel within sight, and the music in the background is being pumped out of the Titanic Museum exhibit across the street. This one isn't in bad shape either, and I get the feeling someone out there hopes to do something with it. I don't think the issue with these old Branson Lodging relics is the location, that's prime, but rather that of newer, bigger, amenity-filled competition. If it were my property, I think I'd try to make them into little value-priced efficiency apartments intended for single employees in the tourist trade who might work within walking distance and be trying to save money. Eastbound and down, the road a couple miles and back to the year before is where a place called the Roland Motel was being remodeled, as the sign says. The building appears to be in good shape at this point in time, and I did see it appeared to be open and operating in October 2022, so it's cool to see an older motel be proudly revitalized. For the next spot, we travel even further back to 2018 and a bit out of town to look at Bradford on the Lake, located down on Indian Point, past Silver Dollar City. I'm almost embarrassed to show this footage because I had the camera set very incorrectly, and so we have this weird result from my attempts to salvage it. The original footage came out of the camera looking like this, so we should be glad we can see any detail at all. These video scraps are the best I could put together from an awkward, less than 10th flight of a drone I had less than two months, but hopefully it's enough to enjoy, even if it looks to be shot with a radioactive potato. 
If we peek over the roof, we can see there is a patio, a playground, a roulette wheel, and some tennis courts. Again, I don't know any details about when this place closed or anything, but I am happy to report that while it doesn't appear to be operating as lodging anymore, the place has new life as a food truck park, and the refurbished building is based to a golf cart rental operation as of October 2022. It's hard to tell in this Z-Ray spec footage, but I think that parking lot island in front of the building contained the cement pond, which is now where they park the food trucks. By the looks of things here, I'd say this building was getting near to being derelict if it lacked vital TLC much longer, so it's nice to know the property appears to have been saved in time. Yet, at least this footage doesn't show any real vandalism or decay, even if the coloring isn't doing it any favors. I do kind of like it though, so let's consider that just a happy little accident there. And we'll finish with a last glance at the, I'm not sure if they filled it in for the food court or not, pool area. I wasn't able to find any epic footage shot in 2022 of this location in the Doesn't Speed Film Foundation archives, so we'll have to make do with this dashcam footage briefly showing five or so food trucks parked up and operating even on an off-season weeknight. That's unexpectedly fantastic. Don't quote me on the weeknight part though. As you can see, there are golf carts aplenty for all your family fun cruising around Indian Point needs available to rent. And here is a location closing look at the stone pillar sign from the beginning of this section now reflecting the new Waterside Food Park name, as well as the names of some of the participants. Let's head back into town to look at the no longer in existence Rains Motel, another antiquated road trip harbor likened to those of the Route 66 dynasty. When I happened to stumble on this place, I stopped then and there to get a few quick shots. And lucky I did, as I never saw it again, as this was an empty field within a year. I always do my best to respect a no trespassing sign, but now that this place is gone, I wish I nudged that door open just a little bit wider and stuck my camera in for a minute, as it seems now there would be more value for history than harm from doing so. If that whets your appetite for abandoned motel scenes, get ready for a main course featuring the Tanny Motel just outside of downtown Branson and wedged behind the iconic Crescent Court Motel, which will be the most unabandoned place featured in this whole film, but we're going to look at it anyway because it is so cool. But before that, here is the first of three record dates of the Tanny Motel, still from way back in 2018. It is still in decent shape, with necessary things boarded up, with no discernible vandalism, which makes me happy, but the lack of life here is taking its toll. It's not impervious to hosting unofficial guests, 
As you can see, the leftmost room on the top floor of this secondary building has its board removed, and so trepidatious me didn't go near it on this occasion. Those quaint buildings on the other side of the fence are of the Crescent Court Motel, not this one, just to be clear. As this was also early into, let's go ahead and generously call it my career, I didn't think to try any window shots, and seem to remember most of them were covered up from the inside anyway. On the next visit, I subsequently discovered those to be kind of difficult to film, as these rooms have some sort of thick, double-paned, glazed windows. A big value of this recording to me is that the vintage sign still has its color and is clearly legible, which it no longer is, as seen in the upcoming footage from 39 months later. I recently come to the conclusion that I suffer a deep affliction of something called anamoya, which is the feeling of nostalgia for times and or places that you never personally experienced. Who knew there was such a thing? It's near adjacent to the whole liminal space sphere thing that I'm into these days as well. Looking at the 2018 footage now, I'm doubting my memory about all the windows being blocked. Anyway, it's time to leap forward a third of a decade in time, but not in space, while checking out this amazing sign one last time before the lettering is scrubbed. You can see the for sale sign of the realtor of the moment as well. This is just my theory, but it looks to me like there have been occasional battles with the vagrancy and not only has this storage closet been kicked in, but that one room on the upper floor has been boarded up again. However, there appears to be a new breach here, recent to this filming, with some thought being given to being less noticeable about it. Notice the curtains seem to be drawn in that room, and not any of the others, at least that I saw.
This is the right-hand window of the office building. And here is the front room in 2021. I'm not sure if this was lobby or registration, but this window was boarded over by October 2022, as we will see. Overall, it's holding up remarkably well. I could see an ambitious person try to make a go of it as a fixer-upper, but you'd really have to commit to execute a top-notch standard while playing up to the appeal of staying here in order to profit. Any collection of random items tells a unique and complicated, if usually pointless, story. Checking in here a third time in October 2022, little has changed for better or for worse, other than a couple new boards and Realty Company tasked with trying to unload the place. I didn't go all the way into the back portion this time, however. I just wanted to see how it was doing and get a couple fresh window shots and the like. The point is, I'm not interested in finger-wagging, shaming, and complaining, as a general rule I should say, because life happens in cycles, things are finite, and value is determined by perspective. All points of a lifespan can be worth remembering. I don't make films like this to lament or mourn these places negatively, but rather aspiringly to serve nostalgia and anamoya to others. Quite simply, in other words, I'm mostly in it for the experience of documenting and creating a more visceral reference of things within my reach while I'm here and there, for whatever benefit it might be for others now and in the future. It's all disgustingly noble to the point of fiscally malnourished beatnikism. With all the doors boarded up like this, looking into these windows is like staring into motel time capsules. Here is the most matching up shot that I have in this whole video, and it still lines up poorly but it's obvious nothing has budged in 15 months. Now for a better look at the fantastic place next door that I took a lot more time to notice on this day. A place that I think and certainly hope is still in operation, but I'm not certain as I don't see a single car parked here. It's possible the place operates seasonally, or it was just a matter of circumstance. 
At any rate, it hopefully doesn't belong in this video, but as it sort of ties in geographically, I decided to show a couple clips while I was here. This is about the most charming of any 1930s motor lodge I've seen yet in person, and it looks nice, well kept, and authentic. This is the one place I actually looked for the rabbit hole, but a low effort surf found almost nothing of interest other than contact data and a small handful of Google reviews. I would be most keen on meeting whoever owns this for a camera tour and recounting of its history. Places like this are living museum treasures that could survive on experienced seekers with money when done right, and I'm all for that. Look how close this is to downtown Branson, just off there in the near distance. This brings us to the final location, another place right along the main strip that I don't know anything about, including any names of the place. Maybe someone will share what they remember about it with me someday. I think I enjoyed filming this location the most for whatever inexplicable reasons and obtained several interesting window shots. Last I saw in January 2023, Nothing has happened yet. I hope you enjoyed this video tour through time of various select vintage Branson area lodgings, and thank you for watching.